Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Little Logistics. This mod adds in quite a few little tugboats to help get your items or fluids from one location to another. Maybe even people too. So this mod adds in a couple different options and a lot of different mod compat for, uh, well, basically logistics. Uh, getting your, your little tugboated items down the river, across the ocean, or, well, whatever waterway you have in mind, from one destination to another, or even multiples. So how does one start in this mod? Well, you can start off with a little logistics guide. Recipe is simply just a book, a chest, and a compass. Inside you'll find a few different categories that you can choose from as well as an index that you can uh, kind of click through, but if you're not here to read stuff then I'm going to try and show you what's in there. So let's start off with your most basic version and then we'll move on to a little bit more advanced of stuff. And that's this, a little steam tug that you see pulling into the dock now. It's pretty darn cool. It's made simply with just some iron, some pistons, and a furnace, which kind of makes sense. Uh, and once you've made one, you just kind of aim anywhere in the water you want and you right click and it will plop down in the water. Now it does have a UI. If you right click on it, you can see it's got a little bit of stuff here. You put fuel in here just like you would a furnace. And this is what's called a tug route. Uh, basically, it's a little remote controller that you can use to set up GPS locations in, in a way, and it will follow the route that you specify as best it can figure out. Now, if you give it like a couple destinations from point A to point B, it will try and get from that one location to another as best it can, similar to how like a water mob would do so. So it will try and follow the waterways, but if there is a river that kind of got like dried up as it went through, it might try and beach itself and just kind of get stuck somewhere. So often making multiple waypoints is advisable. Now, what the heck am I talking about? Let's make one of these tug routes. Uh, it's just some iron nuggets, redstone, and a compass. And you, with it in hand, all you need to do, uh, in this case I'm going to go into creative mode just so that it's a little easier for me to fly around, is give it a route. Where do you want it to start at? And you can't change the order or anything like that at this current time, so we're, I'm just going to say, let's just have this this tugboat start here. Okay, and it's, it's just going to default to the center of the closest block that you're at. And then you see this little pylon. Now don't worry, this isn't like permanent in the world. You scroll off of this thing and it's invisible. But if you, you know, hold on to it, you can see it again. If you don't like this spot, you wanted it actually like a block over there, you can just kind of stay in this location and right click it. Now you'll notice that I made a second one, and now this is my new node zero. This is your starting point. If I go over here and remove that, it then just kind of does that. So if I make, let's see, one, two, three of these things, zero, one, and two, and then I delete one of them, let's say I delete this one, it will then just reprioritize zero and one. Now these aren't always just as easy to kind of, you know, set up, but basically you're telling it you want this boat to go to here. Let's give it a second destination, and then let's give it a third one. All right, simple enough. So it's kind of got a little bit of a triangle going on. So if I open up that UI and I put this tug route in here, there it goes. No, you need to fill it with fuel. Yes, you can use different burnables. I just put wood in there, but you can use coal or other things like that. As it is a steam engine, I, I think it's a little bit more thematic going with the the, uh, the coal option. Uh-oh, smash. Don't worry, these things are pretty uh, resilient. They If they bump into each other, no damage is really going to be done. At the at the worst case, when they pull into a dock area, they might get stuck on some stuff. And then you can use a lead or a fishing rod to kind of pull them out of place, or you can just kind of punch them and they'll, you know, spawn into the world, dropping their contents on the ground. And you can see that that tugboat was doing just fine going where it needs to go. There are a few hazards you may need to watch out for, one of which is magma blocks. So make sure that your route does not take your tug chain across those. Another is soul sand. You're going to want to watch out for that as it will just kind of stop your tugboat chain from going anywhere. So you're going to want to avoid those as well. In my testing, there were no mobs that seemed interested in attacking your tugboat, but you still will want to not lure any uh, archers towards your, uh, you know, chain of tugboat options either, as they can easily be destroyed. I think they only have about a half a heart. Now it doesn't mean that those things are wrecked, it just means that they'll drop into the world and you'll have to pick up all the pieces. 
Another thing you're going to want to watch out for is water currents. If you don't have solid water blocks, then you may have some issues at times where the boat will get pushed into a side or other area. All right, but I've, I've got a tugboat, but I want it to do more. I want it to haul some goods or things or fluids or people or who knows what. I want it to go fishing for me. You've got lots of options. Let's start with making it haul some items. Like I've got a chest of stuff at one inventory in one area and I want it to haul my stuff across the world, like going through waterways and stuff. Well, that's this. A chest barge, which is made simply with some iron ingots, a chest, and some sticks. Uh, and this is going to be very different from the other. Though you can right click on it, you get access to it just like you would a vanilla chest. So how do I get this to pull this barge? You're going to need to make vessel chains, and you'll probably need these for multiple connections. It's just some string and some iron nuggets, and you get six of these. And as I'm in creative, keep this in mind, they won't be used up while I'm in creative, but if I were uh, like in survival, they do get used up to connect the two together. So you can start by simply clicking on one or the other, and you'll see that the chain now looks like it has this broken bit to it. It is looking for a link. You click it over here, and voila, you now have a little kind of convoy going on here. But that's not enough. Let's make it further. I see over there that we've got some other things going on. So we're going to add in another barge, and that is a fluid tank barge. Now if you right click on this, it'll tell you how full it is. It says empty, zero of 10,000. Fluid tank barge is simply just some iron ingots and a little bit of glass. And there we go. We now have an even longer chain. But I also want to supervise. I want to make sure that what is happening is, is going to happen. So let's put down this, a cedar barge. A cedar barge is a couple signs, some wood stairs, and some iron ingots. Again, clicking and clicking again with the vessel chain allows me to hook them all together. And I now have like this nice little setup going on here. So if I put the remote in here, which I do, has three locations, it should feasibly still go around in a triangle. Let's actually take a piece of coal this time instead of that little block of wood, and you'll see that it's going to try and find location zero, and then continue on to location one, and then go to location two. Now this isn't particularly beneficial. You can see things are starting to get a little bit jumbled. So if you have your waypoints a little bit too close together, this will probably happen and sometimes these will get a little bit like overridden or, or grouped up in weird ways. So make sure that you've got like nice soft curves uh, in your planned route. So for example, if this is my node zero right on the nose of this one here that's currently being pushed out of place, but that's, that's all right. I don't mind. It, you see that it's, it's still figuring its way out. Um, if I kind of make this a little bit more round, it should make it a little bit less of like the the over like where it's running over itself so let's try this again put this in here it's still got plenty of fuel going and it should go in a nice circular area instead of that really uh, tight awkward triangle that we had before you can see that it, it does pretty well so this is great we've got a, a tugboat pulling stuff going in circles that's not exactly getting from items or fluids or people from point a to point b so you know how to actually set up those locations. Let's get into how you can have those locations uh, actually offload or load up your tugboat. As you notice here, this one is coming in, docking by itself, and then it's pulling away shortly after. Well, there's good reasons for that. Let me grab some of the items over at this dock. So this little tugboat over here is currently picking up items over at that station and then coming around here and depositing items. With some of these blocks, it's basically telling everything that needs to happen. So let's start with the outside. We've got these vessel corner guide rails. A vessel corner guide rail is made with a bunch of just stone types, some vessel chains, and a bit of powered rail, and you get several of them. When you place one down, it looks a little bit weird, but basically when a tugboat comes up against this, it then gets pushed along one side of it, giving it a bit of guidance so that it can fit into these little areas. You're going to want it to actually go into a one block wide opening with its little uh, tug chain. So if you leave it too wide, then some of these things might not dock appropriately with what you have set up. So keep that in mind. And these, if you notice, are just put in place so that it can kind of guide it a little bit. Now, obviously, you can use your, your tug route. You can see I've got a ton of them on this one. We'll see that one later. Uh, but you can have your tug route coming through here easy enough. But that doesn't guarantee it's going to have an easy time just kind of like finding its way right in here. 
Now this only guides the tugboat, not the barges. The barges are pulled along by it. This is why you need to kind of like soften your curves so that things kind of go where they need to a little bit simpler. Now if you place down one of these, it's going to look, uh, you know, maybe it, that's not the area you want it to be. It's like, all right, I, I want this to be on this side. Let's, let's put this down. I've got the tugboat coming in over here. And so I put one here, and that one's fine, but this one is facing the wrong way. Get an empty hand, sneak, right click, and it'll reverse. You want to make sure that these rails are on the exterior. You don't want them on the inside. That'll just make it kind of like uh, act a little bit weird. So the tugboat now will want to go through the middle of your, uh, you know, tug route area. Now, yes, you could have a tugboat come in here and feasibly come around this corner, but really sharp corners is going to be a little bit tricky. You're going to need a tug guide rail. This is made with pretty much similar stuff to what we just had with the uh, vessel corner guide rail, but you get a bit more. Now, instead, you're going to want this under the water just by one block, and you're going to want it to go in a certain direction. This should help alleviate any kind of turning issues that your tugboat might have. So it'll keep it on a specific track as it goes through. Now, it will still try to follow your tug route, but at the same time, this should help give it a specific direction. That should keep it going in a new direction. It's not necessarily going to have the best turn radius in here, but at the very least, the tugboat should be able to make it through this area. And you can see now the rails kind of like shot it in and around in a really quick, tight circle. This is just giving you an example of how these can be used. All right, so now that you know to have these guide rails at the entrance of wherever your little canal is, what else am, are, are you going to need? You're going to need some of these barge docks and this one over here, a tug dock. Depending upon how your chain of barges is hooked up, you're going to want to match them along with what you have set up here. If you just put a whole bunch of these expecting them to automatically figure out to input or output stuff, you, you, you've got another thing coming because the, these are going to need to be set up specifically with your barges. So in this case, we've got the tugboat, then we've got a chest, and then we've got a fluid, and then we've got uh, well, a people spot, which is just kind of bonus. You don't even really need a barge dock for that. But for the other ones, you will need a barge dock and an appropriate input or output item. In this case, putting down a barge dock, it does have these like blue arrows on it. Again, sneak right clicking with an empty hand will change it to orange arrows and going in the opposite direction. The difference is that blue is going to be inputting stuff into a location, whereas the orange is going to be outputting stuff from the location. So with this coming in, it's going to input any kind of liquids into this location that it may have. So you notice here it has lava in this fluid vessel. It will then input it into this current location. You can see it's draining here and it's actually increasing on this uh, tank that I have here from fluid tank mod. And it's currently hooked up underneath. Now, how are these actually being like removed? Is it these blocks here? No, that's just giving it a direction as to what's happening. Down below, we've got a fluid hopper and a regular hopper. Now, the regular hopper is being fed back up into this barrel. The fluid hopper is being fed back up into this silver tank. And if I were to reverse these and do it this way, it would try to extract uh, into these. But as there is this, these two hoppers down below, they're currently trying to take things. So you'll kind of like be inputting and outputting at the same time. It, it's counterproductive. Now we'll go over the, uh, the opposite of this momentarily. First, I want to show you a bit about the tug dock. This is at the front where the tug is and where it comes in. And you can have it so that it will automatically output stuff. Now you notice there's a, a hopper up here. If I have a hopper and I just place it on here, it will automatically face it in the direction it needs to be. Keep that in mind because that's going to be very important in just a moment. So this actually tells you you can input fuel. So if I get a bit of coal and I put it in here, it then will automatically refill the tugboat as it comes into dock. Looking in here, that's empty and it now has a little bit more coal than it had before. Now, something I should mention is that if you're putting down a tug dock and then you're hooking up barge docks behind it, it doesn't always hook up. If you notice here, this doesn't look right. As with most other stuff, you just sneak right click and it will reverse the uh, angle that it comes in at. And there we go. Items just went into the chest barge and it took off. Same thing with this, but I've got the fluid hopper instead of being below it, I've got it next to it. 
And you'll notice here that this hopper is currently facing into the, uh, the barge chest as well. So you need to have these both facing towards where the barges are going to be, and then they can extract into them. I currently have a creative lava tank uh, flowing directly into this fluid hopper. And then that is flowing into this, and it is pushing it and putting it over there in that little silver tank, slowly filling it over time, about 10 buckets worth per run. So to recap, you now know how to refuel your boat, you know how to organize a dock, you know how to extract an input into and from a tugboat and its chain of barges. Something I didn't show you is the cedar barge. Real quick, you just right click on the seat and it takes you for a ride. As you can see here, I currently have a whole lot of nodes coming in and out. I've got this little barge here shooting through, making loop-de-loops and going out and around to the ocean and back. How do I have that happening? If my base is way over here where I've got my mine set up and my house and my my portable crane for putting in my pocket um, and I've got my docks all set over here and I want food to come in and, and, and treasures and other things maybe from another town way over there, you can do this with a chunk loader barge. Simply attach one of these things to the front, back, middle, wherever you'd like on your barge chain, and it will chunk load a 3x3 three three chunk diameter so that your boat can actually continue on its path and, well, just get there. To give you an idea, the base I was just at is way over here, and we are now way over here at this village. You can see that that same tugboat is now on its way and it is following the same node path that I gave it some time ago. So it's currently harvesting fish with auto fishing barges. And uh, along this path, it's pretty much depositing stuff here and then depositing stuff back at my other base. So the villagers can be fed as well as myself. Now, if you look, we've got some stuff in each of these barges. You'll notice that they start dropping and depositing as it goes, same as usual. I've got some of these uh, barge docks in place with, at the front, a tug dock. And it also has a spot for fuel to go in, should it be needed, as well as some guiding corner guide rails at the front. You notice I don't have to have this at both sides because it, it's pretty much a, just a smooth entryway here, and it's just so it doesn't get caught on that front edge. And what's this? We've got a new contender. This is an energy tug. If you have some kind of forge energy using item in your uh, mod or mod pack, uh, depending upon what you're playing, you can add in a vessel charger. This is just a little bit of metal and some redstone. Add some kind of power source. In this case, I'm using immersive engineering with a low voltage cable on top of a thermoelectric generator with some blocks of uranium and water. It charges this thing up, and then as it comes through, you'll notice it has this little uh, part sticking out here. That is the charger. So when this comes back around, it will recharge it and send it on its way. Now again, if you've forgotten, the easiest way to move one of these things around, so if you've made a, one of these little guys, which by the way an energy tug is made with a little bit more iron, some pistons, and one of those vessel chargers. In my experience, the easiest way is to just latch onto the back end of it with a lead, and then you can just pull it where you need to go. It's a little bit, uh, you know, bumpy, but I mean it, it works pretty good so that you can at least dock it at your vessel charger station and get it the power that it needs. And there we go, you can see the power is going up just by me pulling it into place here. I found clicking on the back end of one of these makes it a little bit simpler. So that's energy ones, but I've also been talking about these, auto fishing barges. Now, you'll notice that some of them still have fish in them, even though it docked. That's because the number of barges I have there is longer than the number of barge docks that I have, as well as the, uh, the hoppers that are currently taking the items out of it. So you're going to want to keep that in mind, that you need to have this matching up with what you have coming in. You'll notice it's been fishing quite well over time. We've got some different fishing rods, some bows and stuff you're going to need to sort through, but uh, this hasn't been going for too long and it's been very effective. Be aware though there is a possibility of overfishing and you'll notice that when the nets go up it's in a non-fishable non area so it will need to have at least a certain minimum amount of water for it to uh, start fishing to begin with. But as you see the nets start going down and it starts fishing. So this is really good for just like doing large winding routes out in the ocean and having it like get a whole bunch of stuff and then come back instead of like this little tiny circle that I have it doing right here, which is probably gonna end up like overfishing the area. 
And of course, these auto fishing barges are made with just a bunch of fishing rods and some iron ingots. Don't forget though, if you have one of these things going on these really large trips, you are definitely going to want a chunk loader barge hooked on somewhere along that chain so that you can, well, keep it loaded, uh, allowing it that really long travel. There you have it, another bit by bit on little logistics. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, don't be afraid to click the notification bell, and until next time, folks, I'll see ya.